Um, so today um, I'll be reading some um, stuff from my Phantom Universe this time. I'm going to be reading from my Supernatural um, branch of Phantom, Phantom Universe. So for those who don't know, my Phantom Universe is basically um, this group of government officials called Phantom are the linchpin of my universe and all the books around that universe are interconnected and will eventually all come together in this massive Avengers Endgame-esque type of big battle uh, at the end with um, Viper fighting Phantom, Viper being the good guys even though they are originally a rogue black ops agency. So yeah, uh, it's a lot of work but it's getting there, slowly. But yeah, uh, this is from the Supernatural from the Supernatural series that I'm planning out. Um, this is like, so this is just a little quick prologue that I just scrubbed up uh, um, to sort of set the scene and get some uh, intrigue going to start off with. So here we are, uh, prologue. Uh, Madam Cross, a pleasure to see you. They are in the drawing room. Please, come in. The doorman spread his arms out like a circus ringmaster as he greeted a pixie-sized woman dressed in a sweeping black dress. The woman handed the door around her clutch purse and shawl as she stepped into the bat into the ha- into the townhouse. She ventured down the hallway that was dotted with trinkets and oil paintings. She didn't pay much attention to them. She had seen seen them numerous times at the end of the hallway. She opened the door on her left. Beyond the door was a sizable drawing room. Old floor wa- f- old floral wallpaper went around the entire room, so did a red carpet. A bunch of couches were grouped by the open fire pit, which was radiating warmth. Sat in these, cou- in these couches were two men that were impeccably dressed in suits. They were unrelated, but they still looked similar. Both were inhumanly beautiful, like they had been lifted off an old master's painting. The only differentiating feature or features was the hair and eye colour. One had copper brown hair and green eyes, whilst the other had blonde hair and blue eyes. Ah, Evelyn. Lovely to see you, the blonde said, walking over to Evelyn and kissing the back of her hand. Please, sit. You must be tired from your travel. London from America is no small journey. A drink? He added as he gestured to the silver tray resting on the side table. On the tray was a decanter filled with scarlet red liquid and several whiskey glasses. Thank you, Nicholas. But the journey hasn't exhausted me. She still took a seat knowing it would please them, and the ensuing conversation could take a while. As for a drink, I'm okay. Drink on the way. Oh well, more for us, Nicholas said with a hearty chuckle as he poured out a glass for himself. I must say, your letter was very... lacking in detail. Care to explain why you brought me back to England? Evelyn asked of Nicholas. My apologies for the vagueness. I was not sure if the letter would be intercepted or not. Nicholas gave her an apologetic smile. A text would have worked just as well. Exactly what I said. We do not live in the 1700s anymore. The copper-haired man clapped. Nicholas on his shoulder with a chuckle. Uh, that must have been done. Oh, bad. Uh, I'm, I am quickly editing as I go along. Um, so, bear with me. Um, there is something uh, about keeping in touch with their roots, Tristan. Even you must agree, Nicholas said. Apologies. I digress. Do you remember Glenmore? How could I not? Everyone said through pursed lips. What about Glenmore? Some of our kin has gone missing from there. We would like you to act as our agent and investigate. Tristan said. How many have gone missing? Evelyn asked. Two, for the moment. Evelyn laughed. 
hardly a cause for concern or even warrants an investigation. Most most likely they'll turn up in some city at some point. Most, if not all, are kin is nomadic after all. There have been reports of others going missing, not just in Glenmore. However, those people have been transported up to Glenmore according to rumours. Would that warrant an investigation in your eyes? Tristan added. Evelyn looked at the pair for a moment while she pondered. Depends. Could this be the work of hunters? Not been an active community in years, Nicholas answered. Just? The pair laughed, but it was Tristan who answered. Which is the two afraid of to do anything that might damage the truth? In that case, I'll investigate. Wonderful. Nicholas clapped his hands together. Oh, there is a local police officer looking into these dis- disappearances, by the way. Goes by the name of Dominic Callahan. You may approach him as your true self if you feel it prudent. This is prudent, Tristan said. If he threatens to expose us, dispose of him. Only as a last resort, Evelyn said sternly. You know my stance on this. Of course. Tristan flashed Evelyn a toothy smile. Is that everything? Evelyn asked as she turned to, Ni- to Nicholas. Your old family home is available for use. If you're not comfortable with that, we're happy to front the expenses for housing. My family home will suffice. The investigation won't take long. Excellent. Well, safe travels to Glenmore. And we look forward to your report. Evelyn stood and gave a slight nod of her head. Lovely seeing you all. Uh, before leaving, she retrieved a shawl and clutch purse. Using her inhuman speed, she was already miles out of London. Do you think we should have told her about Elijah? Nicholas asked Tristan once, she, once he was sure Evelyn was out of earshot. No. She would have not agreed to help us otherwise. You know the history with Elijah. I suppose you're, you are right. Well, a toast to interesting times ahead. Nicholas raised the glass, which Tristan met. And that's that.